today has been a pretty good day. You know, you've got to be able to do that. You've got to be able to take account of your good days. Started off getting a little late for dinner, but not nearly as late as everybody else wanted me to think it was. Good meal. The guy who's our cook this year is way better than the lady was last year. She was horrible. People were talking about things like onion soup for, I guess, lunch? Peanut butter and jelly for lunch? I miss out on lunch because I'm asleep at, what is it, 1.30, 1 o'clock in the afternoon? You know, I'd have to say my, I had this period of quiet safety for about 30 minutes. I usually have a night where it's never like that. Or, you know, it could last 30 minutes, it could last two hours. Even when it's quiet, though, I tend to expect more. But nobody was up. You know, one guy was up when he when I walked past him and then he got up and went back to bed, I guess. Apparently he couldn't sleep. You know, and it was just quiet, calm. Sure, the plant that's out there still makes all sorts of noise, but it's a constant. It's a white noise. It doesn't change. It's got two giant fans, one on one end, one on the other end. And they're loud, but again, a white noise. So it's really not disturbing. The lights on both docks are out. They don't have music blasting from one of the docks. <laughs> it's funny, who the dock that always has music. I keep thinking it's the south dock. But we face east. Because the sun rises in the east and it rises effectively in the direction that we face. And I always call it the south dock for some damn reason. Probably because I'm used to the water being on the west. Not on the east. And where we're at in Kenai, we're technically sort of the in the western section, but we're in like a peninsula. So. But yeah, it uh, was quiet, no lights, no music, no birds, just the big fans. And, you know, it's dark, but not too dark. I can shine my flashlight and it'll show up stuff because... When it's not dark enough, it's harder to get any kind of information from my flashlight. It just doesn't illuminate enough. Because again, it's just not bright enough. Rather, it's not dark enough. And then I had to call, well not call my boss, I had to send her a text. I didn't, a, a door was unlocked that needed to be locked, and I don't have the me, the means to lock it. So I had to get her up in the middle of the damn night. It's three o'clock when I text her. Shit. Trying to throw water all over my computer. That would be lovely. And, you know, <laughs> she's like, oh, I'll come lick it, lock it. <laughs> Because, you know, something about that is just funny to me. And she's sick, too, so probably when I get up in the morning, I'll say, you know, now I understand why you're sick. You're going around licking doors. It only lasted about 30 minutes, this... serenity, I guess. But it was a nice 30 minutes. Enjoyable. Relaxing. You know, despite the fact that there are plenty of things out here that could compromise my safety. I just didn't feel like my safety was at a compromise. You know, I could go wherever I wanted to. Pretty much do whatever I wanted. I didn't have to worry about people riding up in the middle. You know, there was no trucks, no forklifts. No machines, really. No banging or 
hammering or anything. It's like that constant din I was talking about before, where it's just this bass line and it stayed. It was welcoming. And again, I, I sometimes have that for about two hours, if I'm lucky. Even in the middle of the season when it's busy, occasionally there are just days where there's not a lot going on. Or, well, in this case, nothing go going on, really. You know, the mechanics are here and they're fixing stuff up, but mostly they're inside. And it's funny because that, that period of quiet occurred right after the engineer's assistant had shouted his name so loud and it was reverberated by the building. I heard it like a thousand feet away. And I'm like, who the hell is screaming out here at this time of night? It was like 2.30. But I never heard anything from him since. And it was only when it... it, it the, the, the safety, this sort of lack of vulnerability, I guess, existed also in my mind. You know, because I was still safe. But this building wasn't. This building that needed to be locked. And the moment that I found out that that door was unlocked, gone. No more. Just now I gotta worry, now I gotta think, now I gotta figure things out. Gotta make sure everything's running smooth, gotta text the boss, get her up in the middle of the night, you know, think and think and think and thinking and thinking isn't bad. There's nothing wrong with it at all. Thinking is good, obviously. In contrast to <laughs> I'm not even really thinking right now, just kind of going with the flow. But the moment that I found that door unlocked time was up no more lack of vulnerability I guess because partly I attribute myself somewhat to that safety I mean one it's an important office that needed to be closed and I didn't really think of anybody else now it's possible I probably could have got the engineer to do it and if that's the case I'll probably get an earful in the morning but that's not who I went to first I went to my boss who she tells me you know if you've got a problem that needs to be solved right now text me and I'll get I'll get up there and take care of it if I can you know it it's that time of year here in Alaska where people work way more than eight hours a day. I mean, I'm putting in 12. There are some guys up here, they intentionally put themselves at 16, 18 hours a day. And then, you know, my boss, she has, she runs the place. And so she's on call at any given time of the day. She has a typical sort of eight to five job but she's never eight to five, ever. She runs this place, and so she may get a call at two in the morning. She may get a call at four in the morning. She may get five calls between two and four in the morning. Who knows? I guess you gotta love doing this kind of stuff to be able to be in that situation. Because that isn't very much the opposition of what I felt earlier. That lack of vulnerability, that sense of safety and security and well-being and calmness. But she makes a ton of damn money too. Way more than I do. <laughs> but again, I don't think I'd do it. I might do it in a different career. Maybe, if I can find the right one. 
I can tell you though that I'm not cut out for security for too much longer. It's not that it's a hard job. It's just that I've got to focus on things that I really don't want to focus on anymore. <laughs>